Hello all, this week we're looking at something that is different from our normal fare, skill lines. We'll be covering classes much later as that is a daunting project that I am slowly working on in the background. But for now we're going to talk about the other skill lines starting with the guilds. Later on we'll cover alliance, war, and weapons. But for now, let's get into this. To start, we're going to be talking about the Fighter's Guild skill line. This skill line is a variety of tools for Daedra hunting, most of which are stamina focused, as evidenced by being, you know, the Fighter's Guild. Stamina DPS will find excellent tools for added damage, tanks will find some useful tools for control and survival, and you may even find a couple of things useful on a Magicka DPS in here. So let's dive Welcome right to in. To pick up the Guild. Fighter's Guild skill line, like you need to go to the Fighter's the Guild Hall Guild in either any of the major the DLC cities, the places Guild. like Leowin, Surely Solitude, or Rimen, or one of the faction starting cities, Vocalguard, Daggerfall, or Davin's Watch to pick up the starting quest. Once you have that, the skill line is leveled by completing quests for the guild, such as their daily quests or the guild's quest line that will unlock as the skill line progresses, completing dolmen events, or simply by killing Daedra and undead throughout the world. Because it's mostly earned by killing rather common enemies and doing relatively simple events, this skill line tends to easily level with you while you just normally play the game. With that said, let's talk about these skills and what they give you in the order you'll unlock them as you play. The first skill we unlock from the Fighter's Guild skill line is a passive called Intimidating Presence. This passive has two separate benefits. First off, it allows us to intimidate NPCs in conversation, and second off, it reduces the stamina cost of your Fighter's Guild abilities by 15%. This first part is really good for RP, and can sometimes let you skip having to level a bribe at a character or do another fetch quest. The second half is useful for keeping cost low, meaning we can cast Fighter's Guild skills more often and while spending less resources on them. When we hit Fighter's Guild 2, we unlock the skill Silver Bolts. This simple skill at base is pretty basic, costing at base 2,700 stamina, targeting an enemy within 28 meters, and firing a single crossbow bolt at that enemy for decent damage. Its two morphs are Silver Shards, which adds a burst at point of impact that deal 25% of the original shot's damage, and Silver Leash, which reduces the damage and range of the skill by 22 meters, but now yanks the enemy towards you and reduces their movement speed by 30%. For the most part, Silver Shards is a decent ranged spammable skill, but there are often better options in PvE. Silver Leash, on the other hand, is a good skill for supports, allowing tanks that aren't Dragon Knights or Wardens to have a consistent chain to chain in enemies, grouping them up for easier kills. A lot of times you'll see it on healers as well, as saving those resources on the tanks, if the healers can do so, is often useful. All in all, this is a decent DPS tool and a great support tool. Fighter Skilled 3 gives us the first rank of the Slayer passive. This is the passive that everyone actually wants out of Fighter's Guild. Slayer increases your weapon and spell damage by 1%, per Fighter's Guild ability on your bar, and that bonus increases by 1% per rank at the passive, which are unlocked at ranks 6 and 7 respectively. At maximum level, this is 3% per ability, meaning that if you have extra skill slots on your bar that you don't really need or are flex slots, throwing Fighter's Guild abilities can add extra damage easily. This is pretty common on Templars, especially Stamina Templars. Probably the best passive in the entire skill line, possibly in any of the guild skill lines, now that I think about it. Fighter's Guild 4 unlocks the skill Circle of Protection, which costs 4,590 stamina and brands the earth around the caster for 20 seconds, giving any allied character standing in it, including the player, minor protection and minor endurance, reducing damage taken by 5%, and increasing stamina regeneration by 
both of these effects are good and can be used decently well for group support. Its morphs are Rings of Preservation, which heals those inside for a small amount every half second, but cuts the duration down to 8 seconds, and Turn Evil, which fears enemies upon activation for 5 seconds. Ring of Preservation is a decently good survival tool, especially if you're, you know, playing solo and want an extra skill to throw on your front bar for healing. That also increases your damage because of Slayer. And Turn Evil is useful as a root if you don't have better options on a tank, if you're playing, say, Nightblade or Templar tank. At Fighters Guild 5, we unlock the first rank of the Banish the Wicked passive, which gives us one ultimate whenever we kill an enemy with a Fighters Guild ability slotted, improving by one ultimate at each rank up, upgrading again at 9 and 10. This is just a good passive. I mean... I don't feel like I need to explain how essentially free ultimate generation is worth skill points. At Fighters Guild 6, in addition to getting access to Slayer Rank 2, we also unlock the skill Expert Hunter. This ability has two benefits. As an active ability, it costs 5,130 stamina and detects stealth and invisible enemies in 8 meters around you for 5 seconds. While slotted, you also gain the Major Savagery buff, increasing your weapon critical by 2,629. Its two morphs are Camouflaged Hunter, which grants Minor Berserk for 5 seconds after you deal critical damage to an enemy from its flank, increasing your damage done by 5%, and Evil Hunter, which increases the damage of your non-Ultimate Fighter's Guild abilities by 25%, and the range of the reveal to 12 meters. While both of these skills are really good, Camel Hunter tends to be better for PvE as a passive buff, while Evil Hunter tends to be really good in PvE as both a reveal tool and a tool to get more burst damage out of the skill Silver Shards. At Fighters Guild 7, we both unlock the third rank of the Slayer passive, as well as the Skilled Tracker passive which increases the damage of Fighter's Guild abilities by 10% and doubles that damage against player vampires and werewolves. Again, this is just a good passive. 10% damage is good. I mean, again, I don't feel like I need to explain why this is good. This skill line is straightforward and that's what makes it so powerful. Fighter's Guild 8 gives us Trap Beast, which costs 3,240 stamina, and sets a sharpened blade trap at your feet, which arms after 1.5 seconds and lasts up to 15 seconds. When triggered, it deals bleed damage up front and more over 10 seconds, and grants the user minor force during the duration of that second dot, increasing their critical damage by 10%. Its two morphs are Barbed Trap, which increases the duration of both the dot and minor force, and Lightweight Bear Trap, which allows the skill to be thrown up to 28 meters away and reduces the cost, effectively turning it into another ranged dot. This skill is good. It's probably the most run Fighter's Guild skill across every character, as it tends to show up in some form or another on most DPS. Minor Force is really good for DPS, and the added dot isn't that bad. Barb Trap is often better as it requires less casts per fight, which allows to reduce the total amount of stamina cost into this particular skill. But Lightweight Beast Trap is really fun if you're just wanting to throw something at your enemies and don't want to get into melee range but still want Barbed Trap. Fighters Guild 9 gives us Rank 2 of Banish the Wicked, as well as the Bounty Hunter passive, allowing you to accept bounty quests in Cyrodiil. If you want to do bounty quests in Cyrodiil, then pick this up. It really doesn't give us any buffs beyond that one specific thing, so you might be able to save the skill point here if you're not planning to do PvP. And finally, at Fighter's Guild 10, not only do we gain rank 3 of Banish the Wicked, but more importantly, we get Dawnbreaker. Costing a low 125 ultimate, this cheap ult deals a 10 meter cone of damage in front of the, the user and an additional damage over time over 6 seconds. Its two morphs are Dawnbreaker of Smiting, which deals increased damage and stuns enemies hit by it for 2 seconds, 
and Flawless Dawnbreaker, which grants 300 weapon and spell damage for 20 seconds after its cast. Both of these are good, though they're good for different reasons. Dawnbreaker of Smiting is amazing in PvP, as it's a high damage, cheap ultimate that stuns enemies hit. Flawless Dawnbreaker, on the other hand, is good for PvE, as it's both good for the damage passives, as mentioned before with Slayer and Banish the Wicked, and, if used, gives a good chunk of weapon and spell damage for a solid duration. Mostly, though, Flawless Dawnbreaker gets run because it's a good slottable. All in all, Fighter's Guild is a pretty solid skill line, offering good damage options with Dawnbreaker, Expert Hunter, and Barb Trap, and good utility in Circle of Protection and Silver Leash. But more importantly, Fighter's Guild is simple. There isn't a lot of complex skills here to have to wrap your head around. The most complicated thing in this skill list is probably Trap Beast. You can pretty easily build around Fighter's Guild on either a Stamina or Magicka Tune just because it's just free damage at a, up to a certain point. Like, you don't want to replace uh, damage skills that you need, but also 3% damage per skill might be better than some of the other skills you're running anyways. At any rate, I hope you find this guide helpful. I shall see you all next Friday for the return of Left of Meta. We're finally wrapping up the baseline sets and can get into actually interesting stuff soon. Yay! And I will see you all then, and until then, good luck, stay safe, and don't die.